Well, good evening and welcome to our April 28, 2015 Ogden City uh, Special Redevelopment Agency meeting. Let the roll call reflect that all uh, board members are present. And the uh, first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes. Uh, first is the closed session of December 9th, 2014. Board Member Cochner. Thank you, I've reviewed those minutes and found them to be accurate. And then the special meeting of January 6th, 2015, Board Member Wicks. Thank you, Chair Heyer. I reviewed those minutes and found them to be accurate. And then finally, the work session of March 17th, 2015, Board Member Stevens. Yes, Mr. Chair, they're correct, and I make a motion that we approve the minutes being presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Board Member Stevens, second by Board Member <laughs> Blair to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, next item is reports from the Planning Commission concerning mixed use amendment. Welcome, Mr. Montgomery. Mr. Chair, members of the board, what we're proposing tonight is an item the Planning Commission reviewed and is forwarding their recommendation on to you regarding an amendment to the Meadows at River Bend Development Agreement. Let me just explain why this amendment is being proposed. You may recall that uh, a couple years ago, uh, we of course approved the master plan for the project. And in that master plan, and we had certain layout, in 2013, some circumstances had changed with the widening of 20th Street and uh, some design options that the developer was looking at that required an amendment to that development agreement. So in 2013, you had approved an amendment that took a portion of phase two and reoriented the buildings, as this uh, illustration shows, and allowed the, the alley or access to the uh, service portion of the building to parallel uh, 20th Street. With that revision, it also included a change of a building design and, and added a two-story uh, duplex unit uh, as an option for uh, consideration of, of product to be sold on the, on the development. This was a larger uh, unit, 2,200 square feet per, uh, per unit. And uh, you can see the example of the constructed item that's there now. Well, phase three is now coming online, and in order to make it work, we need to have the same consideration as we did on phase two in order for the street system to align. Um, you'll see on this illustration that to the right is the original concept, how the units will be laid out. And what you can see is the units have been oriented and shifted so that more of the units face the common green space, which would be along the east property line, and then to have the circulation system match then the uh, units that are kind of on the western border of phase three are reoriented. And uh, so we, we take into account the original drawing, but now make it so it's functional with the amendments we did with phase two. The other change that's being proposed with this is to add another type of unit into the product mix. Uh, this is kind of a, a blend of what they did with phase two in terms of the two-story unit. But it's a little bit smaller, but what it does, it allows for a couple of different stout units to have the main floor become living space rather than uh, maybe a reception area and then a garage. This re revision of the design, uh, the developer feels will be a, a very marketable product, uh, will meet some of the needs that he's uh, heard people express with the, with the units, but still meet the design intent of the design manual and the overall master plan that we had for, for this area. So you can see the proposed new unit here, a little smaller in size than the other duplex, but still the same square footage sizes of all the townhomes that are there. So it's not smaller than any of the other townhomes. It creates just a more functional floor space. And rather than the middle unit having the garage behind it, actually the garage is to the side but it looks like it's all integrated into the, into the building. So that's the one request, or the second request they're asking. The third request deals with property that uh, 
kind of became isolated as Neaters was developed and as other projects were developed. And the idea of trying to keep the intent of the master plan by having a, another edge of development between this project and the commercial project on Washington. Well, when the Neaters project came in, uh, rather than selling them the entire parcel, we kept out a parcel that uh, was 39 feet wide um, and hoping then as the other phases would come in that we'd be able to develop that. Now, one of the things I need to point out on this drawing is this, this piece of property that became a floating piece uh, was shown to be parking for the units that would be developed uh, potentially along that east property line. So what we're proposing tonight is not any different than the original intent of that plan, other than when the plan was first developed, it didn't consider property lines. And you can see in the uh, illustration on the left there, the dashed red line are where property lines actually exist. So you can see how it, everything just kind of flowed together. Well, when we get into reality, sometimes it doesn't work the way we really hoped it would. And so this proposed amendment of this parcel is taking a look at that piece that's green on the right-hand side and saying, okay, how can we best utilize it? We came up with some early concepts back in 2013. Uh, we tried to then, as, as Gear 30 developed, keep that intent still going on. Uh, in this illustration, you see we kept the idea of a landmark building that was the plan had that Gear 30 or Senate would have to then develop uh, in the future phase. We kept that narrow piece of land, hopefully that could develop into something else. But as we've come to now this point in the project, we realize with the utility easements and some of the other things that exist, it's probably not likely this would be developed into units. And more likely, we need to look at developing this space as a buffer area for those townhomes that would be part of phase four. Now this illustration shows what America First had done along that same property line. And what we're proposing is that we add this piece of property that the RDA had, or has, into uh, this uh, development so that it can be used for, again, guest parking and for a green space buffer. And that we could have some continuity of that green space all the way along as you go towards the river. Keeping in mind that we do have a public access easement that goes from 20th Street that would go all the way through the project to Park Boulevard. So this would be kind of along that space. And so we'd have that green corridor uh, approach that the master plan called for. Now, unlike the uh, drawing here or the illustration of America First, we would look at having taller shrubs because we really want to block the view of, of meters. That center picture is what the townhomes will be looking at without any, any of this development taking place. We think it's important for the sellability of these units that we ha they have a good front door appearance. And so the, the last part we're asking of this amendment is to include this piece of property that the RDA has into this development. <coughs> it would be developed as part of phase four when that phase comes forward. But it would be a property that then the Homeowners <coughs> Association would manage and be responsible for its upkeep once it's installed. So that is the proposal before you tonight. The Planning Commission has recommended approval of these, these considered amendments to the Master Development Agreement. Um, and then I know the developer's here to ask or answer any questions you may have, and if you have any questions of me, I could uh, try to answer those too. Any questions for Mr. Markerway? No, I think it's well okay. presented. Thank you. Let's hear from the developer then. And <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. My name is Blaine Walker, 24 Alta Wood Lane, Sandy, Utah. Uh, I don't have, uh, unless you have a specific question for me, um, I don't have anything to comment on. Any questions? for Mr. Walker. Okay. Great, thank you. I guess that thank was easy. You. <laughs> All right. Uh, we would like to receive public input on this item. If you have something you'd like to uh, say to the council regarding this petition, now would be the time. Okay, doesn't if look like we have any. 
If there is no further discussion, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and make a motion that we adopt proposed resolution 2015-5. Second. We have a motion by Board Member Gochner, second by Board Member Garner to uh, adopt resolution 2015-5. This is a roll call vote. Board Member Blair. Aye. Board Member <coughs> Gardner. Aye. Board Member Gochner. Aye. Board Member Stevens. Aye. Board Member Wicks. Aye. Vice Chair White. Aye. Chair Heyer. Aye. That passes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this next item is public comments. This is an opportunity to address the board regarding your concerns or ideas for the Ogden Redevelopment Agency. Please state your name and address clearly for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. <coughs> Seeing no takers, RDA Executive Director. Tonight, nothing tonight, thank and you. And board members. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Board Member Wicks, seconded by Board Member Garner. For, to adjourn, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, just as a reminder, there will be a city council work session immediately following this special redevelopment agency meeting.